March is perhaps the most desired month for Brazilian astronomers and astrophotographers, as it marks the end of the summer and the rainy season, but is also the beginning of the best conditions for observing one of the most incredible regions of the night sky. Hello, welcome to the Astronomina's channel, I am Fabio and today we are going to explore one of the great nebulae in the night sky, the Eta Carinae Nebula. The Eta Carinae Nebula is one of the largest and most luminous nebulae in the Milky Way and is located about 8500 light years away from the Earth. For comparison, the nebula is about four times larger than the Orion Nebula. The region is also home of the two most massive and luminous stars in our galaxy, the star HD 931298A and Eta Carinae, which serves as a reference for the nebula's name. Like the Orion Nebula, it is a region of intense star forming activity. Most of the activity is caused by the variable star Eta Carinae, which is about 1500 times the mass of our Sun. Furthermore, the star is extremely unstable, due to the fine balancing between the intense pressure of its radiation and its gravitational pull. This causes the stars to eject gas into the stellar space and create the amazing designs we see in the region. It is very likely that when this fine equilibrium is broken, the star will explode in a supernova. This video will also be the right opportunity to compare the results of two different equipment on the same target. In March 2022, I photographed the Eta Carinae Nebula with my Canon 2000D and I was quite satisfied with the result. The conditions will be practically the same as the nebula will reach its maximum altitude in the sky, which is 52 degrees, at 11 pm. This moves my target as far away from the horizon as possible and minimizes the effects of serious light pollution in post-processing, in addition to be the ideal conditions to observe or photograph any object. To have a comparison with the balance set criteria, I will use the ASI 183MC Pro with exactly the same settings I used a year ago on the Canon 2000D. This type of comparison is perfect for solving the doubts of those who are thinking between keeping their DSLR camera or migrating to a dedicated astro camera. The 2022 image was composed of 20 subframes of 90 seconds at ISO 800, which is approximately 15% of the Canon 2000D's best ISO range. To balance the gain of the ASI 183MC Pro, I will set the gain to 135, exactly the half of the gain range available on the camera and capture the same 20 subframes of 90 seconds. I separated some crops from the two images so we could compare them. First, let's take a look at the Canon's 2000D image, which is not astro modified. The image presents much more vivid colors in the interstellar dust regions 
and is less sensitive to the red of the hydrogen clouds, due to the presence of the infrared filter present in the sensor. The filter is also what makes the star colors more vivid and defined. The image scale is also a little different, due to the pixel size of 3.75 microns on the APS-C sensor, which causes a little definition loss, only noticeable when zooming the image too much. Now let's take a look at the image of the ASI 183MC Pro. Right away, you can notice that the camera is much more sensitive to the hydrogen's red and has a higher definition. However, the coloring of the stars is less vivid, but not bad. We can notice the stars are perfectly distributed in several pixels, without square and irregular corners. This is due to the perfect match between the telescope's focal length and the camera's 2.4 microns pixel size. Each camera has its pros and cons, but overall the two images turned out pretty good. The Canon 2000D's strong points are its rich colors and the larger apparent field of view. The ASI 183MC Pro has incredible definition and great sensitivity to the hydrogen's red. The winter helped a lot this weekend, with excellent air transparency and few clouds circulating through the night and early morning. It was very similar to the conditions a year ago, and made the comparison quite fair. I hope you like the final images of the Itacarina Nebula, I wish you all clear skies, and see you soon!